Wow, the menu said this game was developed by the color gray. I wonder what the color purple's working on. Original joke. Nobody made that joke going into this game. No one has ever done that. All right, there's the case of the Golden Idol. I know basically nothing about this game. Uh, it got buzzed recently, and I was like, I get the feeling that Patreon's gonna vote for that soon, and then you did, eventually. Uh, I think it almost won last time, too, but here we are. Uh, I think it might be some kind of puzzle investigation game, which is exactly my thing to look into, and it has a Lucas Pope recommendation, and it's like blurbs, and that's always a good sign. And uh, given some art style stuff going on here, I can see why Lucas Pope would try this game in the first place, because it has it doesn't look like Return of the Oberdin, but it does have some of those like very very specific artistic choices. Look at all this dithering. That's the word, right? It's called dithering. When your shading is handled by just the density of the dots between two colors. There's like four colors here. There's the bright, there's the highlight, there's the actual bronze color, there's the shadow, and then there's the deeper shadow. But all of this in its entire gradient is being simulated by only four colors. You could do it with less, technically, and be a bit more impressive, but it still looks like it's way more than four colors, but it's because the whole gradient's covered by that really specific dithering that has a a density of dots, which is a... Uh, I think a lot of people learn how to do themselves, but this definitely seems to be... This this definitely is algorithmic, because it's a 3D... I, it's a 3D object rotating and being rendered in an art style. But fun trick. Recommended experience. How do you want to play? With highlights. Select this if you don't like pixel hunting. It's like this if you don't mind finding all clickable spots on your own. Um, it says recommended, so I'm going to go with it, I guess. I assume they mean, like, you can press a button to bring up highlights or something. That's usually how this system sort of works. Being completely unable to find them and having to just spam everything seems like a bummer. Prologue. An abrupt termination of contract. Oh! How's he doing? <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, it just it just starts. I haven't read anything about this. This is a trip. Let's turn this up a little bit. It's a little quiet. All right. So it sure seems like this guy just shoved this guy to his death. Also, there's lightning in the background. The dithering is definitely very frequent. You can see how it transitions. Like here, it's a one-to-one -one grid. And here there are gaps in the grid periodically. Then here it transitions to being this X pattern. That's like just complete unbroken diagonal lines. Now here the X pattern's broken up. So there's there's columns and rows cut out of it. So you have this like continuous gradient between what are essentially the, the styles of dithering. You can kind of put like left... You can kind of put them on a scale of like what the brightness to darkness would be. But all the way along, it is just the absence and and presence of this one gray square over and over again. Although the background does have two tones between the, the blue and the white. The white giving the horizon an outline and also going in with these god beams. Can you, tell <laughs> can you tell I've been trying to do digital art a lot lately? I'm trying to draw like almost every day. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge to fit in with everything else. But uh, I haven't gotten... I haven't dealt with dithering specifically, but I keep trying to figure out how to mix comic tones or screen tones in, and it's hard. I always have a phase where I put them in and then I give up and delete them again. Hello? They have a bag. Is those two bags filled with coins and gems. Those really are gems, I was wondering. It was like, is these, are, is these, are, these are jewels or they're candy. A tobacco pouch and a pipe cleaner. A bag of medicinal instruments and some medicine. A golden statue with a red stone and a bag filled with coins and gems. So one of them has medicine and coins, the other one has tobacco and coins. So one of the... It's got a health focus and you got an anti-health focus. Weird statue that isn't... Oh, gold statue with a red stone and a bag filled with... Yeah. So one of them has two bags, one of them has a bag and a statue. They both overall have money from some kind of expedition maybe I knew what you were plotting you snake I did well he has motive a pipe 
A dagger. January 5th, 1742. Both parties agree to these terms for the expedition to Monkey Paw Island. Oh, got a, almost like a little reference to Monkey uh, Monkey Island, maybe? But also Monkey Paw is, of course, the thing where you make it, it grants a wish, but when it does that, it, uh, it twists your wish as like a moral lesson into a bad, the worst possible interpretation of what you said, basically. I think I made a Monkey Paw Curls joke in the Ad Astra essay. Albert Cloudsley, I got that too, has rights to, to two-thirds of all valuables for funding the expedition. Oberon Geller has rights to one-third of all valuables and any golden statues found for providing the map for the expedition site. So they specifically said golden statues. He's really betting on that being the thing that comes up a lot. So in their bags, there are three bags of gems. One of them has two-thirds, one of them has one-third, and then the one with one-third also has the statue. So that's consistent. Dr. Oberon Geller, Esquire, Albert Cloudsley. He's, going, he's, he's in the clouds now as he falls to his death. Uh, Albert Cloudsley, Oberon Geller. You collect the names, okay. So speaking of Return of the Oberdin, in that game, you were investigating what went wrong in a ship, and you could kind of warp through a, a series of vignettes of what happened there, and you would match up potential causes of death with people's names, when part of the challenge was finding their names sometimes, and so here we found their names rather easily. Until proven otherwise, I might just want to assume this is going to be similar-ish. Ah! Says the guy falling to his death. Scalpel. Medicine bottle. Yeah, so Geller... Statue that matches up. This is the guy with the medicine in his inventory and he's got the map. So this is definitely Geller This clue has been added to the thinking panel. I don't know what that means Horn of finger of thumb ruins of Xenopolis Bay of Shadows Ooh, oh 11 out of 11. I collected all of the clues all of the unique terms and whole words So maybe I need to say where we are So the, the ruins are probably where they got the stuff. The Bay of Shadows could be where they are, or they could be in the Horn of Thumb. But there's an island off in the distance. So that's probably one of these uh, two islands off in the distance. So that we are in the we are looking at the Horn of Thumb. We're on the Horn of Thumb again. I guess this is the Horn, not the islands. <laughs> that makes sense. So we're he's so. Uh, Albert Cloudsley has murdered Oberon Geller at the Horn of Thumb. Uh, this is, is that what I do? I go in here? Nope. Kunk. Uh, Albert Cloudsley, Oberon Geller. When a scroll is completely filled in, words can be dragged directly from the slots. Okay, so Albert Loudsley pushed Oberon Geller from a cliff in the from a cliff in the Horn of Thumb on Monkey Paw Island. No hints accessed. God damn, I'm that good. <coughs> and that there was like the crime is just happening in plain sight, and it's the and it is what it looks like. While Dr. Oberon Geller was surveying the poor weather with his looking glass, his expedition partner, Albert Clouds, the Esquire, suddenly pushed him off the cliff. Why though? That was rude. Why'd you do that, sir? I knew you were planning this all along, what you were looking at the best scary weather? Was this a misunderstanding? Was he scheming? I assume that whatever he's yelling is uh, is of intent and not dishonest because uh, no one else is here to witness this except however I'm doing it, I guess. The untimely passing of a rural gentleman. Chapter 1. Complications in the family. Ah, 
He seems to have passed. A ring with a ruby. Where is that? The man is not breathing. His head is badly wounded. Yeah, that sure seemed to be the case. Where is the ring, though? Hmm. Henry Clover. Lead poisoning. I can't read the book. I could just read the words and be like, those sure are words that I didn't know a second ago. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. He was drinking wine, eating some chicken, maybe a little raspberry garnish or something. Maybe. I don't know. There's a boat out there. A yacht is slowly floating in the river. This clue's been added. It's just his... Is that a confederate jacket? Or... Oh, there's the... Is this the golden idol? Uh, cause, cause it's called the case of the golden idol. And so we're gonna keep following this guy around, huh? So this was the thing that was in the original... Uh, person's bag that got murdered. And... Coop. A horse is running in the yard. I figured I had to collect that. Spontaneous combustion. I, Sebastian Cloudsley, will share my humble contribution to the science of anatomy and chemistry. The way these are highlighted make them look like spelling mistakes. Alright, oh, dining is a, re a repeat. August 22nd, 1786. Noon. Woke up. A beautiful day. Noon 30. Washed and dressed in my dining attire. This is, this is over chronicling, sir. What are you doing? A, 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 a 24 hour comic? Remember those? People do those sometimes still. Where they like they have to draw themselves every hour of what they did all day. People, the, the joke is that people will almost never actually finish them and, they, and because it's like actually like a huge undertaking to draw what you're up to all day while doing a day of some kind. But also the people doing them are also often just like probably drawing, so uh, not the most active day usually. Or 10 o'clock, had a beautiful roast duck for lunch, which, which is framed on the wall. Seemingly, 16 o'clock, changed into my hunting attire. 17, rode to hunt badgers. Had no luck today and returned home. Well, they're all the way down there. You're, you're too high up on your horse. 18, changed to my researching attire. I gotta wear special researching clothes. 19, changed to my dining attire. 20, had a, a tasty beef loin for supper. I, I almost said that, read that as beef, beef lion. 22.30, filled in my diary and went to bed to continue reading for research. So he wrote, he, he writes this all at once later on as like an estimation. Not just actively throughout the day, you know, the most boring chronicle ever. Uh, so he, he wears a lot of different clothes. So he, he, wore, he wears his dining attire twice a day. He wore dining, then hunting, then researching, then dining. What is he wearing right now? The timeline would imply dining, but okay, there's there's something up here, there's something here, and there's something here. I'm guessing this is hunting. Because it looks like he goes out in it. Why do you have a spooky mask? August 23rd. That was yesterday's account. So what's what's uh, what's uh, going on here? So the, the piece of information seems to be that we can't rely on what what time the diary left off. Because the diary's last note is that he sa it says that he fills it out at the end of the day. So we have no information about what he did today so far, besides what he's currently wearing. He did apparently move the calendar from the 22nd to the 23rd. So he got out of bed today. He loves his duck. A tall rickety ladder. Oh. It does seem possible he tried to climb up and get this book, and he, like, halfway got it out, then slammed his head, and, like, sort of crawled onto the bed while he was dying of his head wound. I don't know why the ring just floats off in the distance over here. Maybe I can turn the light on to see what's over here? Is there a light? The golden idol kind of has, like, a slot on the back. 
All right, so your name is Sebastian Cloudsley. Sebastian Cloudsley, Lord of Vlad Poisoning, passed away in his bed. The cause of death was a uh, head wound, which occurred when he fell. For yeah, it even says fell from a ladder while he was... I mean, he wasn't hunting or dining because he was using a book. Uh, head wound. Uh, I mean, that's definitely dining attire, and that is, he's eating in it. And that's the hunting attire, because it's all gross, so that's the research attire. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. Hmm. I mean, that's dining attire, right? So, these have to be backwards? That's not the same clothes, is it? No, because they're in the same room with him right now. His hunting attire? Okay. So he, had, he was in his hunting attire. Even though he was seemingly researching. I need to find where he is the lord of. Where where are we? What do these say? Oh, that toggles the visibility of the clickable spots. Gotcha. Oh, the map. I haven't checked here yet. Woodshire, Crow Tower, and Blackfield. We're definitely in Blackfield because there's a river. But, uh, what am I missing? Dining, hunting, dining, researching. Can I turn into pages? No. Sebastian Cloudsley. I'm missing some ver some nouns. I was about to say verbs for some reason. I don't know what this means. Settings. You can alphabetize them or reverse alphabetize them. What does this mean? My phrase has disappeared. I cannot solve a scenario. Nope. Hmm. Okay, the... This is suspicious. The way there's a rickety ladder. And a book partly fell out, uh, partly pulled out. But his blood trail goes all the way down here. So if he's, in, if he's in his hunting attire, then he probably fell from the horse while hunting. Does that be why the blood trail comes from outside? How am I missing two words? Horsey. Yeah, the horse is just booking it. August? Huh. I have lead poisoning already. Does he have the ring made of the thing that was in the statue? No, it's still got a red gem in it. Huh. I'm kind of trying to unfocus my eyes and just spot anything that I could be missing, but I just don't see anything else to inspect, and I don't really know, uh, can't like look inside the drawer. I don't, yeah, based on what I know about how this game works so far, which is not a lot necessarily, I have no idea how to find an additional thing. Anyway, we're in Blackfield. Success. 
While the Lord of Blackfield was hunting, his horse threw him off and suffered a, a and he suffered a deadly wound to the head. I don't know how I missed two things. Hello, friend. Oh no, not Cloudsley. How could this ever happen to Cloudsley? The dramatic departure of an outsider. Uh... Well... A lot of people here. Someone is extremely on fire. Hello, Mr. On Fire. You seem to be, uh... This... A scorched horse brush. A scorched knife. Spare me, devil! I was simply following orders! A knife. Astonishing Monkey Man, property of the Pear Brothers. Oop. Ah. Didn't take Pear. You look like you're having a great day. Oh, his name is A. I think. This person's name was J. The J on his knife. What, the blazes? Yep, that is what that is. August Jockey. Right? Club, because it's his horse jockey. Club Derby. Three Raging Sultan, 35 pounds, race, win, place, show, wager. I, I assume you, this is a card you kind of fill in. You circle or cross out the spots or something. Now, if it's all the same to you, I will take my leave. Uh... He's taken the statue. He's got the idol. What are we gonna do? Eh. The three buttons are on the back. It's got a blue light right now. Did it use the ring? There's the ruby ring again. One pound, two shillings, and two pence. Spontaneous combustion. To perform the combustion trick, you must first cast the freezing spell. The sacred glyphs for the combustion are on the dial. It's like an upside down, it's like a candy cane, green lantern, house. Yeah. So they cast combustion with the, with the uh, idol and did a murder. Did a red hot murder. That thing's adorable, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is that the animal? Hmm, interesting. I'm rather unfazed by this murder what happened. Ash Blair, finest tobacco. Little monkey. Prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my nephew, E.C. Two shillings and a penny. Another dagger. And a saddlebag. Prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my nephew, E.C. And this is E.C.'s saddlebag. E C. So you two knew each other. They had like, they had like, like inscribed daggers together. And then maybe these three are in league with each other, and this guy is just like, I'm gonna kill one of them just to send a message. And now he's just gonna walk out with the idol, probably. Stable rotation for Adam and James. Horse grooming. And they, they, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, James is on horse grooming and Adam's on stable cleaning and then they swap. And do it properly, you lazy oafs. What an unexpected turn of events. Ordered handkerchief, three pounds, three shillings. Boop, boop. London Gazette Gazetteer. 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 Yeah. Monday, September 7th, 1786. Lord Edmund Cloudsley's speech stirs Parliament. EC is Edmund Cloudsley, so they're heavy on the Cloudsleys. It is the family chapter. EC handkerchief would mean that this is Edmund Cloudsley, not the guy with the statue.
Dear Edmund, it has reached my attention that you are seeking a capable new servant. I have just the man for you. David Gore is an experienced coachman with a diverse set of talent that I am sure you will find very useful. If you are displeased with his services, do not hesitate to let me know. Yours, Theo. This is Edmund Cloudsley. And this is David Gorin, I think, as the coachman, because he's got the saddlebag. So we don't have the murderer or the murder E's name yet, except this one is James. James. Adam. Last names. You're Edmund Cloudsley. You are David Gorin. We're still missing two people? Wait, how does this game work? <laughs> how do you play this game? How are there more people I haven't seen yet? How's that? Oh, there's a little door. Oh, was there a transition screen last time I missed? Bat Lord. Pair Twins. Right, that was mentioned earlier. A and J are the pair twins. His head looks like a pair. Uh, Adam, James, Edmund Clowsley, David Gore. Okay, so all the names have been used so far. Blah, blah was to receive blah and blah's will and ordered blah and blah to take the bleh from bleh. Suddenly, Blair died from spontaneous combust combustion. James Air. Blah blah ordered Adam Pear and James Pear to take the will, probably. Like the idol. Probably. I was supposed to re receive the idol in the will. I can probably actually find the will, though. Batley, Cloudsley, and Cubert. So this is the Batley household. But who is the Batley? Nicholas Maker, attorney. Is this guy's name, I guess? I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. I am appalled. That, that ring again. Rose Cubert. Peter Batley. Willard Wright. Sebastian. Reading of the latest will and testament of Sebastian Cloudsley. September 7th, 1786. Albert Cloudsley and Mary Cloudsley. Ito Batley. These are the inheritors. Aphorisms by Sebastian Cloudsley. How to be happy. Eat a hearty meal every day and do not waste your time on trivialities. How to avoid being upset. Strive for that which holds meaning and do not shrink from responsibility. How to be inspired. Take a walk in your forest, your personal forest, and breathe the fresh air. How to avoid being scared. Feeling scared is a weakness. Be strong instead. Oh, wow. He had a very easy life. And then, then it ended. Oh. Here, Willard to write. Our Rose Cubert. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. I want you to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Therefore, I bequeath notes from my research I've been taking on astronomy. I grant you leave to finish and publish under both our names. Dear Peter Batley, 
We have sent you frequent reminders concerning the settlement of your debt, and yet, to date, the debt remains unpaid. We humbly request that you make our that you make your payments as soon as possible, or we will be forced to take the matter into our own hands. The debt currently stands at 255 pounds, blackguard and buck loans. So Peter Batley has loans he's not paying. Six spinning Jenny. I, Sebastian Cloudsley of Blackfield County, being in bodily health and sound and and of sound and, and disposing mind and memory, nominate and appoint Nicholas Maker as executor of my last will and testament. So Nicholas Maker is the executor, my dear brother Edmund. I bequeath to you the gold idol of Xenopolis. You will know what to do with it. So I might have been right about that part. We met so rarely after you left for the colonies. Therefore, I bequeath to you my savings, land, and the Blackfield Man House. Come and establish a museum to my life and accomplishments. Conceded. Make a massive thing about all of my amazing skills and how important I am. Yes, my late sister, your mother, disclosed your financial troubles to me long ago, and I resolved to help you. Bequ I bequeath to you a compilation of my aphorisms to prove, to provide the the direction in your life which you so clearly lack. Wow, rude. Also, I care so much about your 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 horrible financial troubles, which is why I will resolve them no sooner than when I am dead. Good day to you, sir. My apologies. It can be so bad here sometimes. What does that mean? It's a lot of rings. Four pounds. A guitar blade. Why do you have that? Why do you have that? Shmalbat. Sim Hasana Batsi. Is it a word you learned from this? Is that what you're speaking on? We have every word now. And have maybe inspected every clue. This is the Batley household. That means you don't live here, you're just also here. Oh, hey, they're put together. That's nice. So you're Rose. Rose Kubert married Edmund Cloudsley. Oopsie. There we go. So we need to figure out who gets the golden idol without it saying, uh, anything about that person, but everything else we can narrow down, supposedly. We met so rarely after you left for the colonies, therefore I bequeath you my savings, land, the Blackfield Manor House. Incredibly conceited sounding. Astronomy notes. Peter has debt problems, and they're probably- I think Peter might be the one stealing the idol because they can't afford their issues here. Nicholas Maker's the executor. Oops. That means it's you. Uh, 
Uh, none of these are the executor. So since we have Rose, we have two people who are present. Am I supposed to think that he was the one that went to the colonies because he's got the goofy wig going on? Here, uh, let's see. Fat Lord guy with the hat. Edmund, uh, David Goren's the only one wearing a hat. I don't know if I can instantly recognize somebody from that goofy little drawing. We already have these all combined. Okay, so my dear brother Edmund. Where was the family tree again? You have it, don't you? Yeah, there we go. So Sebastian and Edmund are brothers, and Edmund married Rose. Edmund Cloudsley. This this got really this got really big really quickly. I'm trying to I'm sure I'm forgetting something important and people are losing their minds that I'm not fixating on the correct thing right now, but I'm just trying to parse the sheer number of things in front of me and not make any huge leaps about who is who. So what do I use to actually name these characters? Also, why did I name you Edmund? EC, there we go. Okay. I, I don't need to question that. David Gorn's experienced coachman, so I've got David. So pretty sure I'm right about David and Edmund. How do I narrow down the names of these characters? I guess she... Does she live here? I mean, yeah, the, uh... The pair twins are inscribed inside the wall, so they're normally here. They're not outsiders. This is their area. Which means the people that they work for would be here. Have I used the the name? This place belongs to Batley. But these are Cubert and Cloudsley. And the person who died is also not Batley. So I think... I think Edmund and Rose don't live here. So they and David Gorin are visiting. David's the coachman. That makes sense. So this is Batley, I think, because the pair twins are working with Batley, so that must be Batley. Let's double check Batley's full name. Peter Batley, which means the seemingly unrelated person's Willard Wright. It was Willard Wright, right? Hey, I got all the names correctly. Okay. 
Uh, it's Sebastian's will, the only person left. So that name, first name goes up here. Sebastian's also Cloudsley, yeah, because that's the, like, the family name we've been dealing with this whole time. Someone, someone was blah to receive the idol and Sebastian Cloudsley will and ordered Adam Pear and James Pear to take the idol from Willard Wright, I guess, because he's the one that's got it. Then... Suddenly, James Pear died from spontaneous combustion. Someone, someone was blah to receive Idol and Sebastian. I guess it's Peter Batley. Peter Batley is in the room framed to be alongside the pair twins. What do these mean? Are these a clue? Like, what do I do with this? They took a- made a bet on some horses. That's the contradiction. So Peter Batley was to receive something else in Sebastian Cloudsley's will, and then ordered Peter and James to take the idol from Willard Wright, because Willard has the idol here. Probably upset to receive the research? Because why would you be upset to receive a house? Or like, the fucking research, ew. I want you to put your your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Right, so let's put Willard Wright under this. Yeah, I think Peter was pissed that he's receiving research instead of something of value, like monetary value. Also, I think the wig might indicate that he's into politics, I guess. I bequeath to you the notes from the research I have undertaken in astronomy. Yeah, he'd probably be pissed about that. Oh, speech to parliament. Edmund Cloudsley is the politician. So Edmund Cloudsley received politics. So yeah, we can go back to, th to figuring that this is definitely for Willard Wright. I'm trying not to just randomly rearrange them. God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to just randomly re rearrange them, but find an actual piece of evidence before I try. Because it's frustrating if I just, like, brute force it. Oh no... My late sister, your mother. And there's probably another hyphen after that or a comma or something. I don't know. Punctuation is my downfall? Is that what happened today? This isn't addressed to Rose. So this is Rose's husband. Fuck. This is Rose. <laughs> uh, I should try to edit this down, but I don't even know how to begin to keep tell where the breakthroughs were and keep those parts. 
Oh no, this video is a disaster. Okay. Uh. <laughs> shit. It's addressed to the nephew because it's the daughter of the sister. I thought this one was addressed to his late sister. But I guess that's, it's because the mother's dead? Yeah, fuck, I just, I just completely misinterpreted that line. I, uh, I'm used to late terminology referring to someone being dead, and I guess the perspective is that the person who wrote this is dead because it's their will, so I just didn't think twice about it, but they're talking about the... their dead sisters and the nephew. It's a different sister than the one that's in the scene. It's an unseen sister. Bwah. Okay, so now I know what at least what happened. Yeah, no, I'd be pretty mad about that too. Yeah, no, it all makes sense now. I bequeath to you my compilation of my aphorisms to provide the direction in your life which you so clearly lack. He was a- he was a massive dickhead, and sent him- <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, I'd be mad too, if someone was like, Oh, you have money problems? Here's my really embarrassing self-help book I wrote from the perspective of somebody who is magically successful in life and doesn't actually know what struggling is like. It'd be pretty frustrating. Oh my goodness. So for, for perspective, we are one hour in. Uh, I probably need to cut like 20 minutes out of this shit. This isn't- this had to be a nightmare to watch. So the, the loop I got stuck in is I was looking at everything else, because as you can see, there's a lot here. There's a lot of moving parts to keep re-examining. The one thing I thought was safe was the sister. Like, oh, this thing's addressed to his sister. So uh, there we go. Done. And I moved on. So I never reread that line over and over again. Because if I, if I paid closer attention to it and read it over and over again, I would have noticed that, like, yeah, the book of aphorisms is the worst possible reward. So he'd be, you'd be pissed to receive the, the book of, of aphorisms. That's, that'd be really bad. <laughs> That's the entire motive. Oh, I blew it. Okay. Well, <laughs> first episode down. Lesson learned, hopefully? <laughs> Oh, I could have gone better for me. All right, see you guys next time. Oh, yeah, so I wanted to check to see if you could change rooms in this one. I still don't know what I missed in this one. This one's a yellow icon, which I think, I think they're red when you haven't found everything. When you have found everything and they're yellow when you haven't. But I can't find anything else here. Oh, spontaneous combustion. The title. All right, there's a, 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 an itch scratched. Spontaneous combustion came up later, but here it just looked like a regular title and because it, it's normal for the underline to be there on a title, I didn't register it as a clickable thing, but it wasn't related to solving the case, so there we go. At least now I found it. Now we have 100% hint discovery. All right, <laughs> learn and adapt, let's go.